This is Jerusalem, divided between Arab and Israeli. On the right is the Garden of Gethsemane. It looks peaceful, but the tension we saw last week is repeated here. Near Jerusalem, barbed wire divides a village, and armed police are on patrol. Only the hens can safely wander over the frontier. Human beings must stay put. Relatives and friends may not visit each other. This old Arab's house is in the Jordan half of the village, but over there is the orchard he owns. It's now in Israel. He's not been in it for eight years. That small boy is his nephew. The old man has never held him in his arms. These Arabs are living in what was the Jewish quarter of the old city. The Jews were driven out in the Arab-Israeli war. But a far greater loss to the Jews was the Wailing Wall, all that's left of Solomon's temple. Jews have prayed here for 2,000 years. Now they want it back. In the old citadel, soldiers of the famous Arab Legion are always on guard against surprise attacks from Israel. Of all the Arab armies, this is the only first-class fighting force. Now come with me and look down from the citadel into Jewish territory. That building is a Jewish post. Now cross the frontier, and here we are in the same Jewish post looking at the citadel. In this post, only 20 yards separate the two armies. Anything I said to the Israelis here could be overheard by the Arabs. Israel has more trained soldiers than all the Arab countries put together, and they're good, even though they've now got less modern equipment than Egypt. Behind the lines in the Israeli half of Jerusalem, I found a greater urge for peace than I did among the Arabs. I have uh, no feelings of uh, hatred towards them, except that I would uh, very much like to see peace uh, as an Israeli housewife and uh, mother of a child uh, who lives uh, 200 meters from the border. I think it's very important to live in peace with your neighbors. This is the palace of the King of Jordan. Inside the palace, I talked to 20-year-old King Hussein. His grandfather, King Abdullah, was assassinated in 1951 because he was trying to get a peace with Israel. On what sort of conditions, Your Majesty, do you think it would be possible to have a peace with Israel? I think a peace settlement with Israel can only be hoped to uh, uh, be brought about is uh, when Israel starts to uh, feel and believe uh, that there are uh, the Arab rights uh, in Palestine. Back to Egypt to talk to Colonel Nasser, Egypt's Prime Minister, who helped throw Farouk out of his palace. As later on in Israel, I also interviewed their Prime Minister. I've put their answers together. First, Colonel Nasser. What do you think are the prospects of tension being reduced in the Middle East? Really, it depends completely on the Israeli attitude. If they continue to adopt their hostility and their hostile policy, I think the tension will continue. Mr. Ben-Gurion said one time, that he wants to force a peace, to force settlement. As I can understand, to force a thing must be by strength, must be by war. As long as they are adopting this policy, there will be no easing of detention in this area. I'm sitting with Mr. David Ben-Gurion, the Prime Minister of Israel. Prime Minister, what is the present attitude of Israel towards Egypt and the Arab countries? The same as it was all the time, after we defeated the invading Arab armies in Palestine, and that is peace and cooperation between us and our neighbors for the mutual benefit of all the peoples in the Middle East. What is the Arab case against Israel? Really, the Arab case is the case of Palestinians, the case of human rights, the case of those who, people who were driven out of their land, of their motherland, to be refugees in the other Arab countries. This is really what we feel is the most important uh, problem. We have two problems. The problem of the refugees, the one million refugees, and the problem of the frontiers. What contribution is Israel prepared to make towards the Arab refugee problem? Well, we would help them financially, we would compensate them for their property, and we would put our experts and our experience in settling refugees, as we have settled since the establishment of the state, more than 700,000 refugees, uh, most of them from Arab countries. 
We will put our, all our experience at the disposal of the Arab countries to settling Arab refugees in their countries. Well, on what sort of conditions do you think it would be possible to have a peace settlement? Uh, really, it is not a matter of conditions. The United Nations have decided a solution about the Palestinian problem. If these resolutions can be put into effect, I think this will ease the tension in this area. But didn't that include a, an Arab state inside Palestine, a new Arab state? Yes. But would, would that still be acceptable to the Arab countries? Uh, this is what all the Arab countries have asked. In Bandung Conference, for instance, we asked the Arab countries and the Asian African uh, Conference asked to put into effect the United Nations resolutions. But as it stood? Yes. Well, on what sort of conditions do you think it would be possible to get a peace settlement? The conditions is if the other side also will feel the need for peace. Well, Colonel Nasser said to me that as far as he was concerned, the conditions for peace would be based on the UNO resolutions. How do you react well, to that? You mean UNO resolutions of 47? Yes. Well, those resolutions were not only opposed by all the Arab states in Egypt, for they were violated, and the Egyptian armies, together with other Arab armies, invaded Israel at the day it was established. And as we cannot bring back all our dead sons and daughters who died in that war of independence, that resolution cannot be brought back. The peace must be made on the status quo.